Well, hi everyone, Steve Patterson here once again from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, we'll learn how to create another classic Photoshop effect, this time turning a photo into a sketch. In fact, we'll learn how to create four different variations of the effect. We'll start by turning the image into a black and white sketch. Then, we'll look at three different ways to colorize it. First, using the photo's original colors, then using a single color, and finally, we'll colorize the sketch using a gradient. And we'll keep our sketch effect non-destructive, meaning we won't make any permanent changes to the original image by taking advantage of Photoshop's smart filters, adjustment layers, and layer blend modes. I'll be using Photoshop CC here, but you can follow along with any recent version of Photoshop. And if you're watching this video on our website, you also have access to the text version, so you can watch the video or read through the steps anytime you like. We've got a lot to cover, so thanks for joining me, and let's get started. Well, here's the image I'll be using. I downloaded this one from Adobe Stock. If we look in the Layers panel, we see the image sitting on the background layer, currently the only layer in the document. We need to make a copy of the background layer. To do that, click on the layer and drag it down onto the New Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. When you release your mouse button, Photoshop makes a copy of the layer, names it Background Copy, and places it above the original. Next, we need to desaturate the layer, which means we need to remove its color. With the background copy layer selected, go up to the image menu in the menu bar along the top of the screen, choose Adjustments, and then choose Desaturate. Photoshop desaturates the color, leaving us with a quick and easy black and white version. Back in the Layers panel, click on the background copy layer and drag it down onto the new layer icon to make a copy of it. Release your mouse button and the copy appears above the other two layers. With the copy selected, go back up to the Image menu, choose Adjustments, and this time choose Invert. This inverts the image, making light areas dark and dark areas light. Next, we need to change the blend mode of the layer. You'll find the blend mode option in the upper left of the layers panel. By default, the blend mode is set to normal. Click on the word normal and change the blend mode to color dodge. This instantly turns the image white. Depending on your image, you may see a few scattered areas of black, but you'll see mostly white. At this point, to create the sketch effect, all we need to do is apply some blurring to the top layer, and we can do that using Photoshop's Gaussian Blur filter. But rather than applying Gaussian Blur directly to the layer, let's apply it as a smart filter. Smart filters in Photoshop are, in many ways, just like regular filters, but they have two big advantages. Smart filters are completely non-destructive, and they remain fully editable. A smart filter won't make any permanent changes to your image, and you can always go back and change a smart filter settings at any time. To apply Gaussian Blur as a smart filter, we first need to convert our layer into a smart object. With the top layer selected, click on the Menu icon in the upper right of the Layers panel. Then, choose Convert to Smart Object from the menu. It won't look like much has happened, but if we look at the layer's preview thumbnail, we now see a Smart Object icon in the lower right corner. This icon is how Photoshop lets us know that the layer is now a smart object, and because it's now a smart object, we can apply Gaussian Blur as a smart filter. To do that, go up to the Filter menu in the menu bar, choose Blur, and then choose Gaussian Blur. This opens the Gaussian Blur dialog box. We control the amount of blurring using the radius value, and we can control the radius value using the slider. I'm going to drag the slider all the way to the left. This sets the radius value to zero, or as close to zero as we can get, and it sets my image back to white. Begin dragging the radius slider towards the right. The more we drag to the right, the more blurring is applied to the image, and we can start to see our sketch effect taking shape. Lower radius values will create a sketch with fine, thin lines. Larger radius values will create a more photorealistic effect. I'll choose a fairly low radius value of around 10 pixels. 
and here we see that it creates a sketch with very fine lines. If I increase the radius value to something much larger, maybe somewhere around 45 pixels, I end up with a sketch that looks more like the original photo. The radius value you choose will depend on your image, the size of your image, and the type of sketch you're going for. In my case, I'll go with the more photorealistic version for now. Click OK when you're done to close the Gaussian Blur dialog box. If we look in the Layers panel, we see that because we applied the Gaussian Blur filter to a smart object, Photoshop automatically converted it into a smart filter, and we can see Gaussian Blur listed as a smart filter below the smart object. If you decide you're not happy with the amount of blurring you've applied, you can reopen the Gaussian Blur dialog box by double-clicking on the filter's name. The dialog box will reopen to the last settings you applied. Drag the radius slider to change the settings. I'll lower the value to around 10 pixels. Then click OK to close the dialog box. And now we see that I've changed the look of my sketch. If I want to change it back, I can double click once again on the name Gaussian Blur. This reopens the dialog box. I'll drag the radius value back to around 45 pixels, and then I'll click OK. And now I'm back to the more photorealistic version of the sketch. So thanks to smart filters, we can change and fine tune the radius value as often as we like until we're happy with the results. Now, depending on your image and how much blurring you've applied, you may find that your sketch is looking too light with not enough contrast. We can darken the sketch using a levels adjustment layer. To add one, click on the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Then, choose Levels from the list. Photoshop adds a Levels Adjustment Layer named Levels 1 above the other layers. To darken the sketch, all we need to do is change the Blend Mode of the Levels Adjustment Layer from Normal to Multiply. This instantly darkens the sketch. If it's too dark, we can fine-tune the amount of darkening by lowering the opacity value of the adjustment layer. You'll find the opacity option in the upper right corner of the Layers panel, directly across from the Blend Mode option. The more we lower the opacity, the more the layers below the adjustment layer will show through. I'll lower mine to around 60%. At this point, we've created our main black and white sketch. Now, let's look at a few different ways to colorize it. We'll start with the photo's original colors. The original full color image is sitting on the background layer, below the other layers. Let's make a copy of it by clicking on the background layer and dragging it down onto the new layer icon. Then, click on the new copy, background copy 3, and drag it all the way up and above the other layers. When you see a white highlight bar appear at the top, release your mouse button to drop the layer into place. At the moment, because the image is sitting above the other layers, it's blocking the sketch from view. We need to blend only the color from the image in with the sketch, and we can do that by changing the blend mode of the layer from normal to color. The sketch reappears and is now colorized with the original colors. If the color is too strong, we can reduce it by lowering the opacity of the layer. Keep an eye on your image to find the setting that works best. I'll lower mine to around 60%. So that's one way to colorize the sketch. Let's look at how to colorize it using a single color. I'll turn the top layer off by clicking on its visibility icon in the Layers panel. This returns us to the black and white version of the sketch. To colorize it with a single color, we'll use one of Photoshop's solid color fill layers. Click on the New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. Then, choose Solid Color from the top of the list. Right away, Photoshop fills the image with a solid color, in this case black, but we can choose any color we like from the color picker. I'll choose a shade of blue to see what that looks like. Then I'll click OK to close out of the color picker. To blend the color in with the sketch, change the blend mode of the solid color fill layer from normal to color. 
Then, adjust the intensity of the color by lowering the opacity value. If you don't like the color you chose, you can choose a different one by double-clicking on the color swatch for the solid color fill layer. This reopens the color picker where you can choose a different color. You'll see a preview of the color in the document. I'll go with more of a magenta color this time, and then I'll click OK to close the color picker. Again, you can adjust the opacity value if needed. Finally, let's look at how to colorize the sketch using a gradient. I'll click on the visibility icon for the solid color fill layer to turn it off, so we're back to the black and white version. Then, I'll click on the new fill or adjustment layer icon, and this time, I'll choose a gradient fill layer. This opens the gradient fill dialog box. At the moment, my gradient is set to the black to transparent gradient, as we can see here in the gradient color swatch. To choose a different gradient, click on the small arrow to the right of the color swatch. If you click on the color swatch itself, you'll open Photoshop's gradient editor, where you can create your own custom gradient. We're not going to cover that here, so if you've opened the gradient editor, click Cancel to close out of it. Instead, Click on the small arrow beside the color swatch. This opens the gradient picker, where we see thumbnails of preset gradients we can choose from. To select a gradient, double-click on its thumbnail. I'll choose the Spectrum Gradient. Right away, we can see my Spectrum Gradient running from top to bottom through the document. I'll change the angle of the gradient from 90 degrees to 135 degrees so that it's running diagonally, which will add a bit more interest. Then, I'll click OK to close the dialog box. Again, our gradient is blocking the sketch from view. To blend the colors of the gradient in with the sketch, change the blend mode of the gradient fill layer from normal to color. Then, adjust the intensity of the gradient by lowering the opacity value as needed. And there we have it. That's how to turn a photo into a black and white sketch and how to colorize it using the photo's original colors, a single color, or a gradient in Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned something along the way. And I hope to see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from PhotoshopEssentials.com.